What's up everyone, Naman here for another modern video and this time we're going to look at cards from Neon Dynasty to see which ones have the potential to see play in modern. Alright, start things off. Light Paws Emperor Voice. And you look at this and you're like, a legendary creature? That's how you're starting things off, Nan? Well listen, alright, hear me out. Here's why I think this might start to see a little bit of play, maybe one, two of, in a very specific deck. Now, most enchantment-based decks that exist right now are the Enchantress-style decks. But before Enchantress was a thing in Modern, there was a deck known as Boggles. And that's that, of course, green-white, hexproof style of deck where you put a bunch of auras on creatures, make one creature really big, and just kind of push in. It was, like, essentially kind of the Hammer time s style of, hey, here's this one thing, I'm going to just, like, two-shot you with it, right? Um... So I think Light Paws has a chance to be able to bring Boggles back a little bit. Now, Boggles has always been focused on having hexproof creatures, making them really strong, but it's always light on creatures, right? Most of the time it's running, you know, 12, 13 creatures. So having an extra creature in there, shaving off one or two of your enchantment ores is perfectly fine because most of the time you're sitting with a lot of ores in your hand and being unable to cast them all. This helps get around that a little bit with its ability. So whenever an ore enters the battlefield under your control, which you're going to be usually playing on one of those hexproof creatures, so it's protected, then you can be able to search your library for another aura card with mana cost that is equal or less than the one that you just put on with a different name. Now there's a lot of different name auras that are set up in the deck, right? There's 25 different auras usually played in it. So four of, three of for the most part. So it shouldn't be too hard. The most kind of pressing thing that you should be focusing on is getting one of those umbers on the light paws as quick as possible, which does have that totem armor. So if it was to die, totem armor would fall off. But it kind of allows you to kind of speed things up a bit and kind of go a little bit wider than normally you would with the deck where you're focused on, okay, here's my one creature that I have and now I'm just going to throw everything on it. So being able to have this out as well, you speed up your clock even more by being able to get those ores out onto the battlefield very quickly. And that's why that's my pick as kind of the first one, I think. Oh, this has a good chance of being able to start seeing some play again. So let's hop over to the next pick. Okay, Cloud Steel Curran here. Now... You look at this card and you go, wait a minute, I've seen this effect before. Normally we have to pay 7 mana for this effect in Modern, and every now and again, well, I'd say most of the time back in the day, people would run maybe a 1 of Platinum Angel in like a Tron list or something like that for the same type of effect, right? So, it says, Equip Creature is flying and you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. It costs 5 to reconfigure. So you look at that and you go, well, I don't want to spend three mana to play this, and then five mana to turn this into a creature. That doesn't really seem what I want to do. No, really, we want to be able to have things like Sigarda's Aid out in order to kind of just attach it to a creature. So it automatically just kind of goes on to something, which is great. So being able to do that is awesome. It doesn't really have a home right now because you can see it's got three mana. And so the way that the Hammer Time style decks, most of the Sigarda's Aid style of decks right now don't have a way to want to run this because they're running Luris. And that does restrict your deck building to having stuff that is two mana or less. So it does have the potential to say maybe there's a blue-white equipment style of deck that exists or will exist that can say, you know what, I don't care about Luris. That's not really where I want to go. But being able to have this extra just kind of draw things out, more kind of blue-white control-esque or blue-white where you've got uh, Stoneforge Mystic, you've got Sigarda's Aid, Cloud Steel. you of course going to be having access to things like Cauldre Complete and going that route instead of being able to just hammer time people. So I'm going to be definitely testing this out uh, in Modern and really interested to see where this kind of goes uh, going forward here. But that's my next pick of potential cards to be seeing play in Modern. Alright, so speaking of Hammer Time, Reality Chip is our next pick because we were restricted by having cards that were less than 3 mana, which Reality Chip, you can see, is that 2 mana there, and you can look at your top card of your library at any time, and as long as Reality Chip is attached to a creature, you can play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. Well. My deck is full of things that cost two or less mana, so it should be very easy for me to be able to use Reality Chip. 
normally it's just a 04 creature if it's not attached to something right you have that reconfigure where you can pay three mana two and a blue to make it a creature or equip it onto something but again we have things like sigarda's aid that says hey whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control attach it to target creature you control so it's pretty easy to be able to do that. We've also got things like Pure Steel Paladin that has the same thing once you have Metal Crab. So when moving this around and throwing this on creatures, it's great. You do have to adjust your mana base and change it. You're no longer running that kind of white black style of play. So you're going to be losing things like that hand disruption of like Thought Seize or some targeted removal spells. A lot of people have been trying out things like Bitter Blossom and sideboards, but not really the case with this. Now you're going into that white blue style of play for hammer time to be able to kind of take advantage of just playing as much spells as possible with this and kind of getting out a little bit quicker so i really like the idea of reality chip uh, getting in and mixing up the hammer time builds right we've started to see that with other decks right in fact going from just the blue green into kind of that blue uh, green black or even green, black, and blue, switching it up. And now we can start to see that shift with a deck like Hammer Time going, well, you can play pure white, black, or you can go for this blue, white, newer style of play as people test out. So I really like this as a new addition into kind of Hammer Time style of play. All right, Lion Sash. Now this effect should look familiar for any old school modern players out there. Hey, two mana for a 1-1 one, one that I pay one mana and exile a card from a graveyard. Then I get to put plus one counters on it. Now it's a little bit different than that old school. We're talking about scavenging ooze in that regard. So this Lion Sash, one and a white for a 1-1 one, one, if it is a creature. You pay one white, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a permanent now, much better than it previously where if it was only a creature then you would have to be getting plus one counters on it so even better than scavenging news now if it's equipped with a creature equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each plus one counter on lion sash as you might imagine cost two to reconfigure so then turn it into a creature or attach it onto another creature that you already control this card i think is going to be um very very powerful effect and again it's very easy to be a sideboard style in existing decks like hammer time or have the way to be able to kind of paint into its new style of plays that we were talking about maybe there's going to be a, a different type of deck that's going to pop up and want these things but having graveyard based removal is quite powerful being able to sit there and go well i can start targeting specific things like if you are trying to mess with reanimation style things you're dredging right you're doing things in your graveyard now i can be messing with it if you have specific combo pieces in there that you have ways to bring back now you can't because i can just start paying mana and getting rid of those and while i'm getting rid of your stuff my creature is getting bigger or i can just have this lion sash by itself and just start beating face with people so i really like lion. as soon as i saw it i was like scavenging ooze but white and we just get rid of permanence i was very excited about this card so i'm really excited to see what people start doing with this where it's going to find a home is it just pure sideboard card it's going to be really cool All right, and the final card that we're going to be talking about, which should be no surprise to anybody, is Besejo. Who endures? So you look at the art on this. You've seen the art in the background of these. You know just how much the world of Kimigawa is warped around and changed around kind of the progress of technology. But even so, Besejo still endures it all. And it's this big world tree existing on the plane. Now... Legendary land, tap for a green, cool. You have that channel ability, one in a green, discard Besaju who endures, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land an opponent controls. Then it's got that core of path to exile effect where that player may search their library for a land card with a basic land type, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle the library. Now that land doesn't enter tapped, so there is that to note. And this ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control not as relevant of a text uh, since we're talking about modern not commander for this commander hey that's going to cost you one green every time uh with this you think okay what sort of decks are going to be running this well there are some very powerful green based decks 
uh, that do exist in modern, right? We're thinking about stuff like Amulet Titan is going to be happy to be able to say, hey, here's another utility land that you could be able to utilize and, you know, adjust and mess with people, especially because normally Amulet Titan's running four forests, five forests, like some X amount of forests in their list that you can easily just go, well, now this is a Besaidu. All right, I can easily have this in here. They're running things like Ghost Quarter and stuff like that anyway in their sideboards most of the time or some sort of removal land-based effect. Now this does that plus destroys artifacts and enchantments. So I really like the idea of having Besaidu in Amulet Titan, Crashing Footfalls, that's another kind of our teamer, which is green, blue, and red. This could easily be able to fit into one of those lists. It doesn't be able, it doesn't normally run too many forests in that, usually like a one or two of, but you know, getting rid of one of those is maybe possible. Sometimes people are running things like Blood Moon, so it might not be as effective uh, in that. You might have to adjust your mana base a little bit more for it, but being able to discard it kind of gets around that Blood Moon effect that you don't have to worry so much because I'm discarding it to get this awesome ability. So just be aware if you're going to just immediately go one for one forest out for Besaidu, you might have to actually adjust a different land to be able to sneak this in. So you can still use that forest when you have Blood Moon out to be able to cast things like Shardless Agent or Violent Outburst. But just a little, little bit of notes for those Crashing Footfall players. Um, you know, there's other decks too that people are going to be testing this out. I mean, Yawgmoth is another like really powerful green based deck that exists in modern. I'm very excited to be able to test this guy out in there. And we do already have some effects that we care about of destroying artifacts and enchantments, usually that are creature based because we are focusing on tutoring up the creatures. But being able to have this ability in our hand to just discard a land, especially if we're already doing well on land bases and getting our land drops, hey, more effects to destroy things and protect us is really good especially for those players that are saying you know we're going to be playing some graveyard hate on the enchantment or artifact notion right ley lines of the voids people might be playing relics of progenitus you know things that are going to be annoying for us to deal with we have now extra ways to be able to get rid of it there but those are kind of my top five picks that I have kind of pulled out of saying, I'm really excited to see these or start brewing with these in modern. What cards are you guys excited about? Which ones do you think are gonna be awesome to see? How it might actually adjust and change the mana bases, change how people are gonna start playing certain archetypes. It's gonna be really cool as we kind of jump further into Neon Destiny and see what effects it has on modern. But thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you guys next game. Thanks for tuning in and watching guys, Nanman here. I just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out about all the other great content that is on all the channels that I've been producing. So if you guys are watching magic related stuff, you know that on Modern Magic Monday's YouTube channel, we do have, of course, modern content. We've got commander content and cube content. There's also a podcast that kind of highlights different stuff that I'm doing in that scene, as well as kind of just other gaming related stuff. And that is, of course, Nan Man's Nerd Corner. You can see that wherever podcasts are found. Uh, of course, on my original gaming channel for YouTube, youtube.com slash nanman. You can be able to see uh, video game stuff. There's Sea of Thieves content, Minecraft, lots of StarCraft stuff. There's a history, a look back at StarCraft 2 that kind of goes through the history of the start of esports, pretty much the explosion from 2010. So you guys can check out that sort of content. If you're liking this sort of stuff, you guys can also show additional support over on the Patreon. Of course, that is patreon.com slash the real nan man. Twitter is the same sort of deal at the real nan man. You guys can, of course, find all the links to all the content and all the stuff that I'm doing down below. But the best way to show those supports, guys, is to hit those subscribes, the follows, all that kind of good stuff. Spread the word. Let people know about all the cool stuff that I've got going on here. But thanks for tuning in and watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next game.